the Jewish people had to come back to Jerusalem. And God fulfills His prophecy. And they come back into the world. God is not finished with the Jewish people and you should be very glad that He's not because number one, if He was finished, if, they, if He was finished, Jesus would never come back. Secondly, if He was, he would, that means if He broke His promise to them, you couldn't trust Him with you. But because He kept His promise to them, you can be sure that He will keep His promise to you. The fig tree is prophetic. It represents many things, but it's, it particularly represents Israel. There's more than a parable here and, and more than, a, than, than an incident here. A tree is a vessel of life. Israel is a, ve is a living thing, a living nation. A tree is planted by the planter, the owner. God planted Israel, starting with Abraham. A tree puts forth branches, spreads out. Israel put forth branches, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then the twelve branches, twelve sons, then each of those branched out to become twelve tribes, and that's the nation. It's a genealogical tree. And Messiah himself is called the, Netzer, the branch. Why? Because he's born of the tree and he branches out. Israel was planted to bear the fruit of God, but when Messiah came it did not bear that fruit. Now there were many Jewish people, I said it last week, many Jewish people who came to the Lord, thousands upon thousands of believers. If they didn't come, we wouldn't be here today. But Israel as a nation, the leadership of the nation, they turned away. And so the context is judgment. Now, now back to the other tree. Before he says about that, that parable, he says, but if you don't repent, you'll perish. Now that has spiritual meaning because if we don't come back, to, if we don't come to God, there's judgment forever. God, is, God does everything to save us from that. But here there's also a physical judgment because, because what was coming in 70 AD was literally a judgment on the nation. Rome would come in, destroy it, the Jewish people would be scattered to the ends of the earth. 70 AD. Now interesting because the parable didn't have to give numbers. He could have just said, the tree hasn't been bearing any fruit. Okay, let's give it a little bit more time. That's all you need. But he puts numbers in. Why? Interesting though. He says three years and then one more, four years. Four periods of time. Messiah died. He rose somewhere around the year 30 AD. Could have been up to as far as 33, depending on, but 30 AD. The gospel came to Israel thir around 30 AD. The fig tree is given four years or four periods of time. Interesting, because Israel, God's fig tree, was also given four periods of time. It was given four decades to come to God. Four decades for the gospel. Four decades for Messiah. During those four decades, you have the book of Acts. The book of Acts is all within the four. Paul's ministry comes to its end as the four decades, 40, is coming to an end. So other apostles. Many thousands came to the Lord, but the nation as a whole did not. At the end of the fourth decade, what does that come? You start with around 30 AD. Where does it get you? 70 AD. Four decades. The judgment comes. The tree is cut down. 70 AD, exact year, Roman armies come in. Now notice something else interesting. In the last part of the parable, it says in that fourth year, the gardener builds a trench, digs a trench around the tree. Interesting because we know from the history that before it all fell, the Romans built a trench around Jerusalem. And then came the end. The fig tree is cut down. The land of Israel is torn up. And actually the trees of Israel start disappearing. Kind of a symbolic thing. All the trees of Israel are gone for about 2,000 years. John said the axe is already at the root. And then the other one, the other fig tree that didn't bear the fruit that Messiah said, you know, that, that where he cursed it, interesting. Because for 2,000 years Israel, after that beginning, didn't really bear the fruit that God called it to bear spiritually. It bore other fruit, but not the fruit God called it to. And so when I grew up in the synagogue, I didn't see the fruit of the Bible. I didn't see the prophets. I didn't see, you know, I didn't see the, the power of God. It was tradition. It was liturgy, just like many of you grew up in traditional, quote, Christian churches, and that's what you got. But I, but I didn't, there was, in, in, in the Jewish world, there was no more prophets. 
No more apostles. No more messengers to the world. No more words to the, to, that are going to give life to the world to bring, to bring the world to God. I remember when I was maybe about five years old, a really strange memory. An older Jewish boy in the neighborhood said a strange thing to me. He said, do you know why we, meaning the Jewish people, have not had God speak to us for so long, for 2,000 years? We have no prophets for thousands of years. Why? I said, no. He said, because no, none of us have been righteous enough. Interesting. But he knew there was a sense that we had not been spoken to anymore as such. Rabbinical Judaism had the liturgies, they had, they had the prayers, but they, did, they became devoid of the fruit of God that God called Israel to touch the world. Now listen to this other revelation. Uh, there's another revelation in the fig tree from Mark 13. It says this, verse 28. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When her branch is tender and she puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. You know summer is near. The first believers knew that the kingdom was coming to Israel. They all knew that. Here it says, you know the fig tree tells you that summer is coming. Well, the fig tree prophetically is going to tell you that God's purpose is the kingdom is coming. The fig tree. The first believers in Acts, they knew that was going to come. Some of them thought it was going to come soon, but they knew it was coming. Messiah would come and he's going to reign from Jerusalem. The Bible says that very clear. Acts 1. They said, is it at this time you're going to, you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it's not for you to know. He didn't say you have your theology wrong. You have your theology right, but it's not for you to know when. You've heard the term millennialism. Millennialism is not the study of millennials. It's the, study, it's the belief that the, millennial, the millennium is coming. Meaning, the time of God reigning on the earth, it's coming. Then, along with that, you got the, the belief of replacement theology. Replacement theology or supersessionism. Try that one. Supersessionism. What is that? It means that we, the church has replaced Israel. The church has become the replaced Israel. God is finished with Israel or all the blessings that God promised to Israel are now for the church and except the, the Jewish people keep the curses. And they would even say, well, God has kept the Jewish people. Why are the Jewish people surviving? Because he's keeping them as a sign of his judgment. That's it. But wiping out all the prophecies that God gave. That theology actually became the main theology of the organized, established, quote, church. Through Christendom, through the Middle Ages, even into the Reformation. It took a while. And still many old line churches hold to that. But with the return of the Word, when people started turning back to the Word with the Reformation, people started reading the Bible more. Wait a minute. It doesn't say that. Wait a minute. And then you have, from the Reformation, you have the Puritans coming out of that. You have the Baptists coming out of that, then the Methodists, the, and then ultimately to our day. In England and America, I mean, even the Puritans, you read the Puritans, they're amazing because they write about God's going to bring Israel back to the world. They're prophesying it. Way back in the 1600s, those Puritans are saying God is going to bring back Israel in the world. God is going to save his people. God, the kingdom's coming. In England, in America, and then the 19th century, even stronger, 20th century, even stronger. That hope from the first century, which is really biblical, all of a sudden be was restored. Interesting, it was all coming back just before it was actually fulfilled. To the point where today, among most born-again believers, most evangelical, real born-again believers all over the earth, they believe God has restored Israel, God's kingdom is coming to Jerusalem. All over the world. But it was all there from the beginning. It's the Bible. The Bible says it. That's what it is. Anything else is you're spiritualizing, you're doing violence to the Word. God, it said clearly in the Bible, God's going to gather the Jewish people. End of the, the age, He's going to gather them back to the land of Israel. Israel will become a nation again. And so 1948, it happens. Israel becomes a nation again. I said, you know, it's the 75th anniversary of Israel. You know, that sounds like 
It sounds, okay, it's a long time, but it's really a real short time. And that, that means it was only 75 years ago that it actually, all those prophecies happened. And even less than that came the second part that Jesus, what he said and what the Bible said, re, what he said required it. The Jewish people had to come back to Jerusalem. 1967. Days of the summer of love and, and the Beatles, the Sergeant Pepper, all that. And God fulfills his prophecy. And they come back into the world. Apparently God is not into replacement theology. God replaced replacement theology with the resurrection of Israel. God is not finished with the Jewish people and you should be very glad that He's not because number one, if He was finished, if, they, if He was finished, Jesus would never come back. Secondly, if He was, he would, that means if He broke His promise to them, you couldn't trust Him with you. But because He kept His promise to them, you can be sure that He will keep His promise to you. When God says something, He means it. When God writes some, has something written down, He means it. When God gives a promise, He will keep it. Amazing. Even today, the Bible, Zechariah, it says that in that day the nations will try to move Jerusalem and they will injure themselves. Well, you know what? The whole nations of the world, just a little, not far from here in the United Nations, are trying like every year to do that very thing. They want to move Jerusalem. They want to take it away from Israel. But the Bible says they're going to try that, but they'll injure themselves. At the same time, the Bible says in the last days there will be a great falling away, a great apostasy. Well, do you see that? Well, this, at the same time it says the Jewish people will come back to Israel. So we're seeing both the major signs of prophecy have happened are happening right now. But it also says the fig tree, it, the fig tree has to blossom. It didn't have figs on it and he cursed it. And so the rebirth of Israel, is that the blossoming of the fig tree? Well, it's the return of the fig tree, but I don't know if I would say it's the blossoming because the blossoming that you had in Israel back then, but it didn't blossom. The blossoming is the spiritual fruit of Israel. What is that? Well, when God spoke to Jeremiah, and He spoke about the good figs and the bad figs, the good figs and the bad figs were, were actually people of Israel. The king was a bad fig and judgment was coming. But the thing is, so the thing is, what it would mean is that Israel, not just coming back, but the nation of Israel will again produce fruit to God, will again produce believers, apostles of Messiah, disciples, and, the, and then the Word and all go forth. Well, that hadn't happened pretty much around for, for almost 2,000 years, but it's happening again now. The fig tree is beginning to blossom. The fig tree after many, you know, the, the prophet Hosea, God said through him, the children of Israel will abide for many days without king or priest. But in the last days, they will come, they will return to the Lord. They will return, you could say out the land too, and they will come trembling to the Lord and to His goodness and to David their king, which is, which is the biblical way of saying to Messiah. In the last days, the Jewish people don't come in the first, well, they, there was a first, but their main coming is at the end. The Jewish people, you know, like, what, what's, the, what's the biggest part of the week for the Jewish people? The end, the Sabbath, the end. They repent. What's the, the time of repentance in the Hebrew year? What's the time of repentance? The last part in the autumn. And so the Jewish people, they're going to come back to the Lord in the end. But we are already seeing the beginning of it. The fig tree is blossoming. A tree's branches are a mirror of the tree's roots. A tree cannot bear fruit without its roots. So what does that mean? You can only go up in the Lord as much as you go down in the Lord. Your, God said, be fruitful, but you can only be fruitful if you're rootful. Your fruitfulness is based on your rootfulness and it's dependent on it. Your fruits will not exceed your roots. It'll equal it. What does that mean? You want to bear fruit? You got to get down. You got to get deeper. You got to get in His presence. You've got to get deeper in God's presence, deeper in His love. You'll bear your fruit. The more you get deeper in Him, the more your roots, the more you're going to bear the fruit of your life. Your life is as a tree. And, the, and you are to bear, God called you to bear a life of love, of joy, of gentleness, of peace, of goodness, of self-control, of faithfulness. You want to bear the roots or the fruits of love? 
well, I want to be loving. I want to be, but it's hard to be more loving. I, they make it very hard for me to love them. The answer is not trying to be more loving, even though that's good that you want. That's a good start. It's getting into the, you want the fruits of love, you got to get into the roots of love. Get more rooted. You, got, you cannot give what you don't have. You can't give what you didn't receive. You can, a tree can only give what it received. You got to get in God's presence. You got to start soaking up His love into your whole being, into your emotions, into your, into your mind, into your heart, into your hurts, into your past, into your fears, into every part of your being. And you're going to bear love without even trying. You want to bear the, the fruits of peace? Get into the peace of God. Let it soak up. Set, spend time. Soak up that peace. You, you know, in your emotion. You want, you want goodness. You can't just come up with goodness. You need God for that. You got to get into, get your roots into His goodness. Soak it up. Soak up the Word. Soak up His presence. Get into worship. Get into, get into praising Him. Getting into letting it come over your mind and heart and every part of your being. That's how you're going to be changed. If you don't, if you keep trying without doing that, you're on your own. You're never going to change. Even self-control is a fruit, and it comes from the root being in God's presence. And here's another thing. Fig trees don't have to go to school to learn how to bear figs. They don't have to take lessons. They don't have to go to seminars on fig tree bearing, fig bearing. They don't have to learn anything. All they have to do is be the tree. All they have to do is get from their roots Get, get the water, get the nutrients, receive it, receive that sunlight. They're going to bear the fruit. That's how it goes. So that's the same with you. It's not about getting down and beating yourself because you can't do it. Of course you can't do it. I can't do it. Nobody can do it on their own. A tree cannot do it on its own. But all you need, what you need to do is receive and be the tree. Let, let it happen. Work off, you know, focus on getting from God. Focus on receiving and get good at it. Get into it. Get the one, you know, there's the righteous one, the one he's like a man planted, like a tree planted by the waters. And no matter what comes, you know, famine, it doesn't matter. His leaves aren't going to wither because he's rooted in God. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.